In today's video, we're building a real-time memory monitor in Unity, a tool that shows live memory usage and garbage collection events right inside your game. We'll also create a small utility to measure exactly how many GC allocations happen in any piece of code. Together, these tools will give us a clear, visual way to understand how our game allocates and when the garbage collector kicks in. Let's get started. Before we start writing our own code today, I want to point out that a lot of the tricks that I've learned and I'm going to show in today's video come from diving into Unity's internals. And I encourage you to do the same from time to time because there's a lot of insights you can gain just by looking at how Unity conducts its unit tests, for example. Here we have a class that accurately measures the amount of GC allocations that happened during the execution of one specific delegate. We're going to use the structure here to build our own tool, but as time permits, I encourage you to come back and have a look at this class and other classes like it. So let's create our own version of this. We can create a small utility class called alloc counter. This will help us measure how many heap allocations happen during a specific block of code. Let's create a field that will hold a profiler recorder. The recorder class can track different categories like rendering or physics, or in our case, garbage. Now in the constructor, we want to set this up. We can grab a recorder from Unity's built-in GC alloc category. The recorder actually starts enabled by default. So before we do anything, we disable it. This gives us a clean slate so we don't include any allocations that happen during the setup itself. Now let's add a conditional block. We only call filter to current thread when we're not running in WebGL. The reason is that WebGL builds run in a single threaded environment and Unity's profiler API doesn't support thread filtering there. On a desktop or mobile though, it's good practice to filter to the current thread, otherwise we might pick up allocations coming from worker threads or engine systems that we're not actually testing. Once that's done, let's enable the recorder again. At this point, it starts counting every GC allocation happening on this thread. Now let's create a stop method. First, a quick sanity check. If the recorder is null, that means maybe we've stopped it already or something's gone wrong, so we throw an exception. Then we disable the recorder. This freezes the data, so no new samples get added after this point. On non-WebGL platforms, we also call collect from all threads. This just makes sure we flush any pending data from other threads. It's harmless even if we filtered to one thread earlier, but it's not available on WebGL, which is why it's wrapped in the same condition. Then we grab the actual number of recorded samples using sample block count. Each of those samples represents one managed memory allocation, so this number tells us exactly how many allocations occurred while the recorder was active. Finally, we can clear out the reference to the recorder and return the count. I'll add a few references here to the top of the class, and I'll leave this in a gist if you want to take a look at it later on. In the meantime, why don't we create another class that will let us actually test this out. We can make a little demo class that will let us test this out in real time. First of all, let's have a constant that will define what a megabyte is in terms of bytes. Inside the start method is where we'll have our actual test. First, we'll create a new instance of our alloc counter class. So this will immediately start tracking how many GC allocations occur in the current thread. Now let's deliberately allocate some managed memory. We can create a one megabyte byte array, and right after that, we can stop our allocation counter. Finally, let's debug something up to the console. Of course, we should expect to see one heap allocation. I've added our demo model behavior to a game object here. Let's control P, and we should see one allocation come out in the console, which is correct, so working as expected. But we can probably get a little bit more information than this. Let's go back to code. Near the top of our start method, we can make a call to gc.getTotalMemory. This would give us the total number of bytes allocated on the managed heap right now. We pass in false to tell it not to force a garbage collection. If we passed in true, the GC would run before reporting, which would distort our measurement. The profiler method get mono used size long is Unity's version of the same idea. It tells us how much of the mono heap Unity believes is currently in use. The two aren't always identical because the GC and Unity's profiler may track memory slightly differently, but they should give us a good picture. Now we can grab new memory readings after the allocation. Finally, we can log everything out so that we can see what actually happened. Let's go right into play mode and zoom in on the console. So both readings are exactly the same, slightly more than one megabyte. In fact, exactly four kilobytes more than one megabyte, which is probably just memory alignment and allocator overhead. So now we've been able to get some fairly useful information in a very small amount of code. And now we have a simple way to check for allocations without having to dig into the profiler. It might be nice to visualize our memory usage over time as well. 
To do that, we can use a data structure called a circular buffer. We've used a circular buffer on this channel before, but it's been quite a while, so let's quickly build one from scratch. A circular buffer is just a fixed size array that once you've filled up, new items overwrite the oldest ones, which makes it ideal for recording things like frame history, logs, or memory samples, where we only care about the most recent data. Head marks where the next write will go, and tail marks the oldest element currently in the buffer. Then we have a few properties. Count tells us how many valid elements are currently stored, and capacity is simply the total number of slots in the buffer. In the constructor, we can make sure that the requested size is positive, then we allocate the backing array. This buffer will never change size after construction. When we add a new item, we insert the new item at the current head index, then we advance the head. And because this is circular, we can use modulo so that we wrap back to zero once we've reached the end of the array. If the buffer is already full, meaning count equals capacity, this means adding a new element will overwrite the oldest one. So we also move the tail. Otherwise, if we still have space, we can just increase the count. For the DQ method, if the buffer is empty, we can throw because there's nothing to remove. Otherwise, we take the item at the tail, move the tail forward by one, decrement the count, and return the item. Finally, let's define an indexer so that we have read-only access by logical order. This will let us read elements as if the buffer were a simple array, so zero is the oldest and count minus one would be the newest. First, let's make sure there's no out-of-range values. Casting to uint protects against both negative indexes and out-of-range values in one compact check. Drop something in the comments if you know why that's true. Let's include a sanity check for invalid capacity or an uninitialized buffer. Then we can calculate the actual position in the array by adding the tail offset and wrapping it modulo capacity. Okay, now we've got a mechanism for tracking memory frame by frame. Let's build something to visualize this. We can have a new mono behavior, memory monitor. First of all, let's define a few on-screen elements that we'll use to show live numbers. Then we could have a raw image where we'll draw a little real-time graph. We could give it a history length, so how many samples we'll remember. This will be our buffer size as well. And a graph height, the vertical resolution of the chart. Then we can define colors for each data line. Allocated memory in green, mono heap in blue, reserved memory in gray, and GC events will be shown in red. Let's have our bytes to megabytes constant, and we can also define a black background color for the graph. Next, let's put our circular buffers to use, one for each kind of memory measurement. And then we can have a circular buffer of type Boolean to track garbage collection events. These rolling buffers will hold a fixed window of recent samples, so the graph always shows the last few seconds instead of growing forever. We can also track the texture we'll draw into and the pixel array for fast updates. And at some point, we might want to incorporate some of the functionality from the profiling recorder. Maybe we want to count allocations. Last GC count will remember how many collections have happened so far, and we could have a few long values to track memory at given points in time. Let's collapse these up into a region and start writing some logic. In our start method, let's initialize our circular buffer to the size of history length. And in fact, we want all of them to be the same size. Then we could set up our profiler recorder. Again, we'll grab the built-in GC alloc category. We'll disable it briefly, filter it to the current thread, and enable it again. Then we could set up our graph texture. We'll just create a small off-screen texture that will paint manually each frame, one column per sample, one pixel per vertical step. We can also initialize our pixels array, and then make sure that we assign our texture to our raw image. Well, that's all the setup we have to do. Let's move on to update. Each frame will collect new profiling data. Allocated memory, how much the Unity allocator has given out. Reserved memory, how much total memory Unity's allocator has reserved from the OS. Mono use size, which is how much managed heap memory the C Sharp runtime currently has in use. And we can grab the current sample count from our recorder. It's a little bit less useful and less accurate to capture all allocations during a specific frame as opposed to a specific block of code, but you could show this metric if you wanted to. Then we can also grab the number of garbage collection events by passing in zero as a parameter. Zero represents the generation. In .NET, there can be several generations of garbage where short-lived objects get collected frequently and long-lived objects don't get collected so often. But in Unity, there is only one generation, which is zero. We can compare that result against the last GC count. And if that number has increased, then a GC happened this frame. Next, let's make a little helper method to update our TextMess Pro elements. If it's undefined, return early. Otherwise, we'll pass in a formatted value, set its color appropriately, and we can use that in our update method to update each of our memory texts, which of course are all basically the same. We could make the GC collection flash a different color, but it might happen so fast we don't even notice it. Now, if the frame's reserved memory is the new max, let's update max reserved. This will keep our graph scale consistent when we draw it. Then we have to remember to take this frame's values 
and add them to each circular buffer. The final step will be to draw a little graph for ourselves, so let's do that in a separate method. Let's collapse down the update method and zoom in again. If we don't have a texture, let's return early. Otherwise, let's fill the entire pixel array with the background color. Then for each sample index, let's compute a scaling factor. We can start a loop over every sample that we've stored. We'll let X represent a column in our texture we're about to paint. We can calculate how tall the graph should be relative to our largest memory value so far. And we can divide pixel height by that value to get a scale factor that converts bytes into pixels. Now we can convert each memory metric into a pixel height. H mono will be the blue bar, H alloc will be the green bar, and H res will be the gray background bar for reserved memory. Now let's actually draw this vertical bar for the column. Each pixel's index in the flat pixels array is X plus Y multiplied by width. Then we choose the pixel color based on how high up we are in that column. So this will give us a stacked vertical gradient where blue sits inside green and green inside of gray, giving us a visual memory layering. Let's also draw a solid red line across our grid every time there's a garbage collection event. For that, we can just loop over the height of the graph and we'll set every pixel in that column to be the GC event color. Well, I would say that's probably enough for a little test. Let's go have a look. Here in Unity, I've already set up a little canvas and I've added the memory monitor script to it and dragged in references to all the text mesh pro elements and our raw image. I'm just going to pause it right away because we can already see one garbage collection event happened right at the beginning, which is fairly typical in a Unity project. Now, if I let it go a little bit, this project, which is completely unoptimized, we'll probably start seeing the blue bar keep creeping up a little bit because there's little allocations happening every frame, not the least of which is my two string for each of these text mesh pro elements. So that will continue to grow over time. And let's just run around until we see another garbage collection event so we can really see what's going on there. There it is. I was too slow to pause the game, so I'll just pause the video. We can see an immediate drop in the blue bar as the garbage collection happens and releases all of that allocated memory that's not in use anymore. So this is a neat little tool to build. We could probably make it even more useful. Why don't we find out how much garbage has actually been collected? If we come back to the script we created way back in the beginning, let's add an update method. Previously, we were allocating some junk memory in the start method, but now let's do it every 60 frames. And in fact, I'll probably increase that to 10 megabytes. Now, if we come back to our draw graph method, here we could check as long as we've generated enough GC event data, we could take the difference between this frame and the previous frame, and we could debug that out to the log. That will tell us exactly how much memory has been collected. Now you could do something clever on the graph. Maybe the red bar on the graph would be proportional to the amount of memory that's been released. I'll leave that up to you. Well, right into play mode, let's give it a shot. We should see a red bar here pretty quick. If you notice in my logwin monitor, it says we're allocating one megabyte, but I did actually turn that up to 10. So hopefully something soon here. And there's our bar. We'll just pause quickly. We can see down in the console, it's telling us that we've released almost 160 megabytes of memory. Another thing I like to do sometimes is add a debug.break statement so that if something strange in memory happens, it'll immediately pause my gameplay and I can investigate. So that might be some unexpected massive garbage collection, or maybe it's a certain number of allocations that have happened. Or you could have a metric that's maybe a certain amount of allocations have happened over a given time period. That way, when your memory monitor code has figured out something weird is happening, you can immediately open up the profiler and go and have a look. So for example, right now, let's just pause the game here. I'll come up to the main menu under Windows. You can come down to Analysis, and let's open up the profiler. Each of those brown spikes is me making that massive heap allocation. Notice that I have Deep Profile toggled on near the top there. We can sort the results by GC alloc. You can see the 10 megabyte allocation there. Then you can start drilling down to find out exactly where this happened. So for us, it's coming from our update. If we drill further down into update, we'll find behavior update, the actual class, and the actual method where it happened. So anyway, we're not going to go too far into the profiler. Of course, it's an invaluable tool and much more detailed than anything you could probably build on your own. But that being said, it's useful to know these little memory tricks so that you can do a little bit of memory tracking on your own in your game without having to rely on this sort of heavy duty memory profiling tool. And so I encourage you to take the code that we've written here today in this video and add all kinds of other features to it that'll suit you and the needs of your project. And of course, when you do that, I'd like you to share that in the comments so that other people can learn a few new tricks. Maybe there's some methods that I haven't covered today that you find really useful. 
And of course, I'm absolutely certain somebody can make a better UI than I have here in this video. But that being said, that's all I've got for you today. Feel free to join us on Discord if you like. Don't forget there's a new video here every Sunday, so hit that bell so you don't miss any of them. I'll throw another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.